Welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. My name is Adam Downing, an Extension Forester with Virginia Cooperative Extension. In the middle of October, I got to spend some time at one of Virginia Department of Forestry's nurseries, where a wide variety of species are grown for Virginia landowners. And in November, I took a quick tour of a high-intensity pine tree nursery in Georgia, where a company grows containerized seedlings for much of the southeastern U.S. My name is Josh McLaughlin. I'm the Assistant Forestry Center Manager for the Department of Forestry. I run the Augusta Forestry Center here in Augusta County. I'm standing right now in one of the seed beds. This is block four. And we're standing in front of some loblolly pine that we have here. Uh, you see they're nice and uniform, the same size. We do that to help, we actually trim these trees back every few weeks to make them stimulate better root growth because a lot of these trees are gonna be straight planted for reforestation. And so when those guys are planting, they're actually planting for speed. So we wanna make sure that the roots are straight and very sturdy for they can plant them out quick as possible. This is a very beautiful view. You can see in the background, the Blue Ridge Mountains at Shenandoah National Park right there. So um, <clears throat> I always joke with people that this is a, this is my office. So if you look out in the fields to the side, you can see some hardwoods out there. So there's silver maple, sycamore, black locust, black cherry over in that area. We're standing here in block six, and this is where we have a lot of our oaks this year. We got two rows of southern red, and if you look in behind me, you got several rows of white oak. We got about 60,000 of them came up. About one out of every five acorns will actually be turned into a seedling. So then this is the American plum. You had two rows of hazelnut. Here's some northern red oak. And we got several beds of that. Uh, that is one species we have a lot of this year is northern red. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, pin oak and black oak this year. Um, the, here is uh, swamp chestnut oak. We got three beds of swamp white oak. We actually got a, a local park has two huge old trees in the, on the park and we collect from that uh, when we can. Uh, and then you got a few rows of pin oak. So you got more northern red oak. The reason is, is we, we were trying to establish people planting more trees, especially here in Virginia, to help clean up the Chesapeake Bay. Because I think, personally, northern red oak is one of those species that could be planted a little bit more. Because it's one that I can almost guarantee that it will live once you outplant it. And it's probably one of the best germinating acorns that we have here. So I'm hoping if you watch this video, we got plenty of them for sale. They're $3 a piece. If you just want five, if you want a thousand, they'll run you $320 for the thousand. So 32 cent a piece. When you think of it that way, our trees are inexpensive because this tree nursery is 100% self-supporting. So every seedling sale we have continues this operation. You got several beds of willow oak. These are two beds of common persimmon, a regular or what people call Virginia persimmon. This is actually American chestnuts. These are some of the hybrids that we had for sale this year. We don't have a lot of them, and just keep your eye on the inventory because numbers change all the time once we start pulling trees out of the ground in the spring. So then you can be able to see, do we still have some available? If we're sold out, call our office. They'll put you on a waiting list. Uh, please feel free to do that. So then you got a row of Allegheny chinkapin. Not a lot of people know that chinkapin exists, but these are that these are it. You talk to any person in the older generation, they'll tell you how they would go to the chinkapin grove and eat till their belly was full. They are good eating, I will tell you that. And we'll start pulling trees after the first of the year to process and have everything ready for reforestation and our seedling orders. UPS shipping season starts February 22nd through the end of April. So this is the big cold storage that we put seedlings in when we're pulling trees. We got some seed that we store in there as well. So let's go in and take a look. So this is a pretty big cold storage. It's actually one of the biggest non-food cold storages on the East Coast. Uh, the reason I know that is this is also a God forbid a possible morgue for FEMA if we have to use it. Usually these racks have seedlings on them and these boxes over here usually have seedlings on them. But today, what's on these racks is sit some seed. That's a good size white oak acorn right there. 
and you should probably see a sprout start to come out here in the next few weeks because for people that don't know a white oak well, actually, when it germinates, it will sprout a sprout and radical root itself in the ground and hold itself still, and then the next spring will sprout again to grow that tree. A red oak is not going to do any of that until the spring. It's literally going to sit there on the ground, and it's going to do both sprouts at the same time. Every year, the Department of Forestry does a news release to have the public help us find acorns. And people will tell us where acorns are at, and we will collect if it's close. If it's not close, people will collect and then give them to their local forestry office that will bring them here. Everything is soaked in water, the, ba the bad ones will float, the good ones will sink, and we will keep the good ones and they will be planted at this nursery. Um, the one education snippet I can give people that collect acorns and send it to us is make sure the acorns you put are in a breathable sack and make sure that you're not mixing species together download Virginia Tech's Dendrology app to help you ID trees. This is our freezer unit that we store seed in. So you're gonna see a big array of seed, including metal drums that are full of loblolly pine seed from our own orchards. Some of the seed we get like canane fir, we do some test runs with stuff every year to see how we can grow things and try to perfect stuff. And if we can, we will eventually start planting to more of a wider scale. So some seed can be frozen and we like to freeze it about between zero and five degrees at a low humidity. We don't want, our, we don't want the seed to dry out, but we don't want it to be over moist and freeze, and freeze solid. So some seed like pine seed, a dogwood seed, cherry seed can be frozen. I've learned over the years what can be frozen and what can't. <laughs> this nursery here is a hardwood mixed conifer nursery. So this year's inventory is probably about 5 million trees. The facility we're standing in here is mainly used for counting trees. Once the trees come out of the field, they'll come through this middle room where you see that table. We'll have them in these canvas wrappers and then the crew will then take the canvas and throw them up on one of the tables and that's where they count so this conveyor belt system that we have will put the counted trees up top and then there's a conveyor belt down at the bottom as well and that conveyor belt is what takes the trash out or the compost here in the grading room where we count trees we actually put seed on the table to dry and these are actually american hazelnuts and they grow on the branch of the bush in pods like this and so you can see once you open them up where that seed is inside. So these are American chestnuts that come from Lasane State Forest at the Department of Forestry's uh, research station there and these are the burrs that come from the trees. You can see the burrs, we bring them here, we dry them out, and we collect the collect the chestnuts and we're going to grow these and they will be available for sale to the public. So. This is where American chestnut baby trees start, is this little nut right here. And so not a lot of people realize that the efforts that go through in this nursery, that we deal with the customer that wants five dogwood trees, that the customer wants one to two million loblolly pine. I mean, we, we treat everybody the same, and it's just amazing what we do. Hey, I'm Clark Duncan, uh, nursery manager here in Moultrie, Georgia our headquarters for IFCO Seedlings. This is a regular like refrigerator, 38, 40 degrees usually. Okay. Um, this like right now is cone harvest time of year, so they're getting they're cutting the green cones. Um, they're gonna take them off and send them. We've got, there's basically two processors in the U.S. that do pine seed. There's one in Georgia and one in Louisiana. Um, and so they'll take those cones, extract the seed, they'll clean them, de-wing them, process them, dry them down, size them, um, everything's done by genetic family, uh, whether it's CMP breeding or it's open pollinated. Um, everything's pretty much got a DNA. Um, what they know what it is, they know the mother or they know the mother and the father, either one, so they keep all that separate because everything now is genetically driven. So that happens in the spring. They get up and bag the flowers of the trees and they can inject the pollen that they want so that it's just not an open, um, you know, burst and, and it's the surrounding trees. And so, they can bag the female flowers and eject the male pollen, and then that fall, it'll produce the seed that they want. You know, they'll go in there until we're ready to sow them, 
and typically we start getting our seed ready around January or February, um, and then we start planting here first of March. It takes us about two months uh, to plant our crop here. We're we'll, we'll usually done about the first of May. Here at the uh, Moultrie Nursery, uh, we have 15 center pivot irrigation systems um, and the bench system, T-rail systems. Um, under each one of these pivots, there's roughly 4 million seedlings. Uh, for a total of, we're doing pretty going to produce about 64 million seedlings out of this Moultrie Nursery this year. This is a longleaf pine. And this is how our, our, our root st structure will come. It's a fully intact root, root system, our container grown six inch plug and longleaf will be about 10 to 12 inches tall coming out of the nursery. Longleaf's probably got the worst germination okay. rate. Um, it's gotten a lot better over the years, but like your loblay and slash is probably gonna have 95% or better. Longleaf's about 85. Great example of a loblay pine right there. This these, is... are, these are ready to be shipped. Um, they're about eight months. So we try to have everything in the nursery ready to go by October 1st okay. for shipping. So your day to day, are you in the office? Or are you coming out and checking? Yeah, this time of year, I'm kind of finishing up the growing, so I spend a lot of time out here okay. checking the crop. But they're they're about to go dormant. This is our soil we get in here. It's all imported from Canada. It's a peat moss mix. It's got some vermiculite and perlite in it, um, and so it's it's peat that's compressed in these big bales um, and brought down from Canada. And we get about 80 truckloads a year. This is where we'll plant all the seed into the tray. This is what our soil is made of. It comes down to this machine. Uh -huh. um, this machine will break it down more. Pour it on top of the, the trays that we get fed through there, um, these container trays. And so this is a tray filling machine and that soil get compacted into that machine. It, it gets dumped in and vibrated and compacted down um, and fills all the holes in that tray for sowing. But once we get going, each line will do about 500,000 to 700,000 per day. So we can run a million and a half to up to two million per day out of here. Wow. And trays will move down to this. This is a vacuum drum sower. Um, so the seed will get poured in here. Um, it rotates around, it vacuums up the seed. And as the seed's moving, the drum moves around and drops the seed in every cavity. And then when it gets around, it's got a little squirt of water that'll shoot the seed off into the... So it's pretty, it's pretty fast motion, so it's constantly picking up, dropping, picking up, dropping. Not, it's not stopping and dropping, it's a continuous motion. Um, then it moves down to this area. Um, this is kind of like a quality control area, like I was saying earlier. We're in that space business, so we're gonna maximize every cavity. So we're gonna make sure that there's a seed in every hole, or if there's a double, we're gonna pull it out. This is, this is one of our main trays right here. It's a four and three quarter inch. And if you look there, you can kind of see air holes throughout. Um, and that works to help prune the roots. Um, and then you've got the you've got the ribs that go down, like we were saying earlier, that drive the roots to the bottom to the drain holes. And this is a, a proprietary container to us that we have a patent on, uh, as, as well as a few others. Basically, once the seed is on top of the soil, it moves down. This is a capping machine. And what we do, we actually just use regular old sawdust and it runs through there and it just puts a light layer of sawdust on top of the tray. And what that does is just kind of helps keep moisture on top of the seed and kind of hide it from birds. Um, and then we've sent it through a water tunnel here and we just put a little moisture into the, to the tray until we can move it outside and put it underneath the pivot. So they'll fill this trailer up here with boxes and go down one of those main roads in the pivot and that arm can extend down over them and they'll actually send trays up to the to the people we'll have people on either side of that middle conveyor and so the trays come to them they don't ever have to get down um, and then they pull the trees there they cull them out and count them in bundles of 50 and package them in the boxes and we do 300 per box 